It's Saturday night, and for some of the 36,000 Pacific Islanders living in the Bay Area, that means a standing date at the Kaleo Cafe in San Francisco's Sunset District. At Kaleo, we have a, sometimes a Kani Kapila session, and Kani Kapila means to literally um, to make noise, but we're making music. If you're not singing, then you're playing an instrument. If you're not playing the instrument, then you're, you're dancing. Especially for those kupuna or elders who are away from their homeland. So it's a place for them to gather, um, share their thoughts, and for us younger generation to learn from them. Mm -hmm. and it's more of a family setting where it's just one big family, ohana, in Hawaii. Kavika Alfici was born in the San Francisco Bay Area. But like many Hawaiians whose family left the islands for jobs on the mainland, Kavika is torn between opportunities here and his roots on the big island of Hawaii. My dad moved here for work from Hawaii, and as I was growing up, flew back and forth um, to stay with family. I relate everything back to what I learned in growing up in Hawaii. Being here most of the time, I would say that I, I think about home all the time. Now, as an adult, Kavika has dedicated himself to keeping the spirit of aloha alive. I really enjoyed performing. You know, I get to infect people a little bit with Hawaii on the culture. And hula and Hawaii on can only do good for people. For Kavika, the yearning for all things Hawaiian is more than nostalgia. As a teenager, he was chosen by the elders of his community to carry on the traditions of hula. Now he is a kumu hula, or hula source, for Aloha Pumehana o Polynesia, one of nearly 50 groups practicing hula around the Bay Area. Today, groups like Kavikas, known as Halau, reach back in time to preserve the ancient chants and movements practiced for centuries, before missionaries banned hula in the 1800s. Okay, so we gotta, we gotta make that ahehoa no oe no ula look like that. Ika vele lao ka no ike, just like an ocean. I know that my kuleana or my responsibility is that I have to focus on the ancient. And what we have today for this hula is like a glimpse, just barely a small, a small piece of what really there was. Okay, ha'ina, one, two, three, pa. Traditional Hawaiian culture had no written language. Instead, island stories and religious traditions were passed along through the living record of hula. For example, in this hula chant called Wai Oli, the dancers strike smooth stones together to evoke the sounds of torrential rains flowing down rocky riverbeds. The hula was passed on orally. It's an oral tradition. So what I, what we do today, most of what we do today, where songs, chants, dances, passed on from my kumu, passed on from his kumu, kamea, 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 etc., etc. It, it, it's, it's a, there's a, there's a, like an umbilical cord. 
it's passed on. Much of the ancient hula that survives today was once a form of animist prayer, in which every plant and animal, every force of nature, had special significance. Keeping those traditions, born in the tropics, alive in California's arid environment, has been a challenge for Kavika and his halau. Ali comes in like different colors, green, burgundy, the flowers are, the flowers, have you seen the flowers already? Kind of, kind of yellow, uh, purplish, pinkish. A lot of times we have to go into the city streets where there's things growing um, and actually pick and um, go back and make our lays and we use them you know, for our performance. That's what it looks like right before it comes out. This is one right before it completely blooms. We have lots of songs that, that describe this exact thing right here. <laughs> oh, like this. Yeah. oh, there, I like that. You know, we make all of our implements and our clothing, so learning how to make them is a big part of uh, be being a hula dancer. And it's also mana that you put into the craftsmanship and the workmanship of, you know, making your own gourds to your lays, to your um, implements, and that, be that becomes a part of you, that becomes of you as a hula dancer. So you take that with you through your hula career, as opposed to going out to Wild Beach and trying to buy it at a store. So. This is going to get attached to here. Okay, and the less amount of space, the better. So you gotta take a razor and clean it out a little bit, make sure it fits right into place. Okay, once that's, once that's figured out, we sand down the tip of this a little bit, that way when we apply the epoxy, it sticks better. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we apply, and then you're finished. I no pahae kainoa. Our style of hula comes from um, the big island, Hawaii. The island is still alive, there's a volcano there, and so, you know, we reflect our surroundings. So, um, our style is, is aiha'a, maybe a little bit more closer to the ground, it's a little bit more bombastic, it's a little more earthy, and sometimes this dance requires that we raise our voice to the utmost point that we can raise it, and that we do maybe slap our legs as hard as we can slap it because that stinging is part of the dance. energy of this group, some groups when they get up and they dance, literally mana, the life force energy is so strong that it rolls off the stage and everybody comes together, lokahi, everybody comes together and we share, you know, a passion for this beautiful, beautiful dance for all the history and the culture that's in it and we laugh and we cry and we sweat and you know, it's great. Like our last king, Kavika Kalakaua, what he said was the hula is the heartbeat to the Hawaiian people. So it is the hula that brings, that keeps the culture alive. Through the hula, we are able to keep in touch with our past generations. So I bring hula with me and I bring Hawaiian culture with me no matter where I go. Um, and it's not something that I can kind of change hats. It's something that I am and I can't change and I refuse to change.